kindness. It is like I tell a stranger that if you have a problem, come and stay in my house. After a few years, he kicks me out of the house. And when I start making a noise outside my house, that see, these people have entered my house, so you call me a terrorist. Am I a terrorist? I have welcomed a person with a stranger just as a human brother I got him to the house. After a few months he kicks me out and when I say that I want my house back, you say that I am a terrorist. Who is to blame? We are to blame. We are to blame. We have to find out that what is the cause of the problem. If we, who Almighty God has given us intelligence, has given even the power and to get together, if we get to the root cause, you will come to know that why should a person want to die? Who would like to die? Who would like to die? A person who says that I say I am going to get killed, so why not I die and take somebody else also? So if you ask the psychologists, they will tell you the root cause is we have to go and ask these people that why are you doing all this? And many a time we will find out that the truth is lying behind it. And the truth is that they may be being harassed and some people may really be terrorists. Some people may be terrorists and the people for money. Some people for fame, some people for politics. So I do agree, sister, that but majority what I feel that they are being troubled, whether it be Muslim, whether it be Hindu, whether it be Christians, there has to be a backlash. If a person cannot bear whatever torture that is undergoing, he resorts, the psychologists say, and I am a medical doctor, I have done my studies in medicine, they have to retaliate. It is human nature. So why should a person who would not like to raise a finger, would like to carry a gun in the hand. Why? What we have to do, we have to find the root cause and try and solve this problem. That's the only way we can see to it that these terrorizing, the innocent people will stop and all human beings can live together as one brotherhood. Yeah, myself is uh, Ravi Kumar. I am a software engineer. My first request to my fellow Indians is don't always relate September 11 with the terrorism because so many things have happened in India. More than 20,000 people have been killed in Kashmir. 2,000 Muslim brothers have been killed in uh, Gujarat. So we have so many instances to link with terrorism in India itself. Like we can link December 13 to the terrorism and the day in which Akshardham temple people have entered that we can link it with the terrorism. My I thank uh, Mr. Jagir Nayak for clearing the misconception about the jihad. My question is that uh, you told that uh, just for the sake of one person, you cannot uh, attack the country. Now, I am asking about the imaginary scenario. Suppose I am going to the some Arab country, I am causing a great devastation, I am killing lakhs and crores of people there and I am coming back to the India. and. Uh, the country is giving a proof to me, a proof to Indian government stating that this person has caused the devastation. And the Indian government is repeatedly still, uh, telling that uh, proof what is given by you is not valid. And that proof is being shared with the other countries. They all agree. And suppose the country repeatedly is not ready to surrender me. Then what is the action that particular country has to take? Uh, let let just... Uh, I am, I am not completed. And another thing is the proof of that country is previously also when that kidnapped plane entered that, they encouraged the kidnappers, they allowed the terrorists who have come in that plane to escape out of the country. If that is the status of the country, then what is the action that particular country has to take it? You are telling. Suppose I have come. After causing a devastation, I have come back to India. Indian government is not ready to surrender me. And the proofs have been given and Indian government is repeatedly telling the proof what you have given is not valid. What is the action that country has to take? The brother has asked a very good question and a very relevant question, a very good analogy between what's happened 11 September again, though he came back to 11 September. Analogy is very good that he as a person goes and crosses an Arab country, kills thousands of people, devastation comes back and the Arab country gives proof to the Indian government, Indian government does not accept. Mullah Omar again, he's not my friend, he told USA, he told USA give me proof and the USA government could not give proof, they shared it with Tony Blair, they shared with Musharraf, Musharraf is saying that I have got enough proof. 
I have seen the proof. When you are asking the Afghanistan government to give the culprit, the Afghanistan government is telling me at least give us proof and they could not give proof to Afghanistan government and they are sharing it with Tony Blair. It is illogical. That means there is something fishy in the proof. Till today, till today, <laughs> till today Osama bin Laden is prime suspect. It is only hypothesis. The proof should be solid proof. And if they had given solid proof that Osama bin Laden had done it, Afghanistan had to hand over Osama bin Laden. We didn't do. If you do something to the Arab country, and Arab country gives proof, and if Indian government objects, then you can go to the International Court of Law. Where is the International Court of Law taking place in case of Osama bin Laden? Where is it? Where is it? There are international guidelines. Do you know the rule of international guidelines? If, suppose, there is an extradition policy between the foreign countries. For example, if a person like India and UK have an extradition policy, if any criminal of India does a crime and goes to UK, they can ask for the criminal back. And one of the examples, Nadim, you know, Nadim, the music director, the Indian government said that he was involved in Gulshan murder. So when they gave the proof in UK government, in the UK court of law, the UK court of law said your proof is nonsense. They sued the government, Indian government. Indian government had to pay the charges of the advocates of Nadim. Enough proof they gave. They didn't agree. They said your proof is not valid. Did India wage a war against UK? Why didn't they wage a war? Why didn't they wage? <laughs> but the Indian government gave proof at least. There, USA didn't give proof to Afghanistan at all. So even now, if you go to a Saudi land or any Arab land, and if you do something, and if Saudi Arabia gives proof here that you are the culprit, even if the Indian government doesn't agree, Saudi government or any Arab country cannot bombard the 1 billion Indians. It doesn't give permission. <laughs> Islam doesn't give permission that even if you are the culprit, even if you have killed 1 million people, they can come and catch you if they have the power. They can't bombard the innocent people. They can't. They can't do it. It's not allowed in Islam. Same thing you are saying, let's talk about the present scenario in Kashmir, in Gujarat, in Akshadam. I say that whatever may be the background, why those two terrorists entered. In Islam, you cannot destroy the monasteries. You cannot kill the religious people. If anyone goes in a monastery, in a place of worship, in a temple, and killing innocent people, it is against the Quran. It is against the Quran. We have to condemn it. Just because those two people, whatever the reason was, and they got a letter that they believe they came from Tahiri ke Kisas. Kisas is an Arabic word, which means you can take revenge. And it said it was the cause was because maybe their family was killed. Even if their family was killed, they have no right to kill 44 people. The cause was maybe somebody else, but the action was wrong. Just because somebody killed, if they knew who the person had killed their family members, if they have gone and taken revenge with that person, it was separate. How can they kill other 44 people who are innocent? So in Islam also, even if you know who the main culprit is, as I said in my talk in Surah Maida chapter 5 verse 32, if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for creating mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. Only if you know who the person is, if he has done mischief, and then murder, that is the only way that you can kill him. For no other reason can you kill anyone else. Islam condemns that as though you have killed the whole of humanity. Hope that's the brother. As a Muslim, personally, I want to ask you this question. In the current socio-political, theological climate of stark black and white prevalent in the world today, I find it extremely difficult to endorse any faction or even my own notions of right and wrong. Ruling out the validity of the prejudice, it is an accepted norm today that it is the followers of the faith who reflect the faith itself. Assuming such an argument, how can I make a stand? How can I preserve the solidarity of my faith? There is a basic conflict of opinion between me and my Islamic peers. As an individual, would you personally endorse the stand of a Saddam Hussein, the passion of a Mujahideen fighter, or the death of a Palestinian suicide bomber? <laughs> 